Hello, and welcome to this episode of our solution series. I'm Katie Hosley, a senior developer advocate at BigCommerce. And today I'm with Dima, a staff software engineer at BigCommerce. Uh, Dima, do you want to introduce yourself and kick things off? Uh, yeah. Hey, Katie. Thanks for having me. Super excited to be here with you today. I will kick it off by providing some context on what this is all about and why we're excited about it, and then walk you through the actual demo. Uh, so as many of you might know, BigCommerce has a GraphQL storefront API for some time. There are a few reasons we decided to create GraphQL version of storefront API in the first place and continue investing in it. The first one is the flexibility for clients. Clients can request only the data they need, for example, reducing overfetching, underfetching, and unnecessary data transfer. Clients can also request multiple different resources in a single query. For example, for PDP, you could fetch product together with car details and customer information and all in a single request. Another benefit is strong typing. No more guessing on what's the type and the format of the response and individual fields. There are many more pros, but I will just stop there. Until now, GraphQL's storefront API was limited to the number of use cases supported. But as a part of the latest release, we added the crucial missing piece, that's the card and checkout capabilities. So why is it a big deal? The answer is very simple, because the GraphQL storefront API now has all the necessary capabilities to power the end-to-end -end shopper purchase funnel, from browsing products and viewing product details to adding products to shopper cart and filling out checkout details. So when it comes to what's in scope of the new API, it's all the operations you need when working with current checkout on the storefront. For example, creating a new cart and adding products to it, making adjustments to the cart, like removing items, changing the quantities, filling out the information for the various steps of checkout, like billing address, shipping address, selecting shipping options, and as a final step, converting the cart into a pending order and providing the appropriate credential to take the payment through Payments API. Uh, OK, so this is all I have for the context. And I guess it's time for the actual demo. So the first step uh, when working with Storefront GraphQL API is to define what type of token you need. So there are two types of token. Uh, simple token. This one is to be used for native Storefront integration and cross-origin requests. With this type of token, the API relies on cookies and session. And token itself is not considered a secret. You can even find one available in the Stencil context. Uh, generally, you create one just by hitting storefront API token endpoint, uh, providing channel ID, expiration, and allowed course origins. Uh, it will look something like that. And uh, the second type of token is called customer impersonation token. This one is to be used for headless integrations and also making requests from the perspective of a particular customer. The token considered a secret since it allows to impersonate any customer in the store. So it should be treated with respect as a secret and stored securely. Uh, the endpoint for creating customer impersonation token is very similar, just storefront API token customer impersonation, and it returns you the token that you should use for GraphQL requests. I will demo using a simple storefront token, and then I will briefly touch on what's the different differences in current checkout GraphQL when working with customer impersonation tokens specifically. Uh, OK, let's start with the simple creating a simple cart first. So I would add the product information with a quantity and create a cart. Uh, once I've created, I would like to add it to my globals. So I can reuse it later. Uh, the next step would be to add more items to the cart. Since there are different types of products, for example, simple product, variants, product with modifiers, the input to add those to the cart is slightly different as well. So let's try to add a few different products to the cart and see how it works. Uh, so for example, to add a simple product cart, I just need to specify the product ID. Uh, to add a variant, one option is to specify product ID together with variant ID. Another option is to, instead of specifying variant ID, you could just specify option and option values of that variant. And by doing that, you would achieve the same result. So in our cart, we currently have one simple product, 
then the variant that we created using variant ID. And the third product in the card is variant by using selected options. Uh, we can fetch our card using the separate query. We have all the information available there. So when the shopper is ready for checkout, we start using the checkout queries and mutations. So let's see what happens if we fetch the checkout. Uh, we've got a checkout. We have all the information needed. And let's try to add a, finalize the checkout and start with providing billing address. So I would use a separate mutation for that, add a billing address, provide all the information needed. And yeah, so now I have my checkout with billing information provided. Uh, after that, we're going to add shipping consignment to the checkout. We would need to use the line item ID. And give me one second. I will need an environment variable for that. So let's say I would use the first product to create a shipping consignment. Uh, yeah, so this is done. I've added shipping consignments to the cart. And the last step before we complete the checkout would be to select the shipping option. And in order to do that, I would need the consignment ID and shipping option entity ID. Let me grab it from the previous request. So this one would be consignment ID. And we have a few available shipping options. One is pick up in store, another one is free shipping. Let me select the free shipping as our shipping option ID. And going back to the mutation to select the shipping option uh, should be very simple and straightforward. And the selected shipping option is there. OK, and as a final step, we complete checkout to get back the draft order and the payment token. At this point, we are done with Storefront GraphQL API. And in order to process the payment, you should refer to Payments API using the payment token provided as a result of the mutation. And yeah. OK, so going back to the very beginning on the differences between using simple token and custom impersonation token, uh, you need to be explicit on what card and checkout you're using when using custom impersonation token. Uh, for example, what it means is using simple token, you don't need to specify the car ID. It's all in the context of the current session. Uh, when using customer impersonation token, you need to be explicit on what car ID you use because there is you're not working in the context of any session or shopper right now. So if we run this query, you can see that if you don't specify car ID, you have you don't get any cards back. If you specify the card ID, you get the card back. Uh, another differences between simple token and customer impersonation token is you can have only one single card active using the simple token. So for example, if I create a card and trying to create another one, you will get an error because you are not allowed to have more than two cards. Uh, it's not the case for customer impersonation token because you're not sending requests in the context of a session and have access to all the cards. That would probably be the main differences in regard to current checkout APIs. Uh, before we wrap it up, I wanted to mention our amazing GraphQL Playground as a good resource for the developers. It's very helpful when working with Storefront GraphQL API since it contains the latest schema and information about the queries, mutations, and fields available. You can play around and test queries, mutations, see how it behaves and what it returns. For example, uh, you would notice that there are many more current checkout mutations available than from what I've demoed today. And I highly encourage everyone to check it out since there is a high chance of you finding what you need for your specific use case there. And that would be all from me. Katie, back to you.
Awesome. Thank you so much, Dima. So developers, if you have any questions about anything that we covered today, please feel free to comment on this video or drop a note in our Dev Slack space. If you're not in Dev Slack, um, the, the link to apply will be in the description of this video. And I'll also add the link to the documentation and the playground that Dima referenced. Um, and yeah, just want to say thank you so much, Dima. This was awesome. Um, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you.